Hello and welcome to another Toy Box Audio Video Demonstration video. Uh, today we are going to look at the... We're going to have a deep dive into the filter bank module, which is uh, has a lot of functionality you might not have seen before in something like this. Inspired by uh, uh, an old Buchler device, I believe. Um, I'll maybe stick a link to another video in in the actual video when it gets released. But there's two devices in this little layout. We've got the noise device, which is going to be the exciter for the filter bank. Have a little look at the noise device first. First of all, though, before everything, let's see how I've got this connected up. The usual culprits, uh, pitch signals from the note out device to the noise because we will be using pitch to track the playback speed of the samples and another one obviously to the pitch input of the filter bank here obviously otherwise it's not very musical at all and another one going to the oscillator down here which we'll use for FM later on uh, and the gates obviously leading to the noise reset trigger circuit there to restart the noise if we choose to have a triggered playback routine here. More will be added in future for the moment. We'll just leave it on free. So ultimately the receipt, the reset import is uh, not being listened to by the device in the current mode. So this little scrolling icon there will just enjoy its way through the noise. We have many noises to choose from here. Let's have a little listen to them. I've got a little setup here. Everything from white noise, grumblings, to air canisters, to shortwave radio, hiss, whatever that is. There's many different, many different possible noise sources. I think the first one though is uh, just a classic white noise source. We will go with that for the moment as it's a good full range frequency to trigger the uh, filter banks in there. Um, also, I should mention... We can track playback speed uh, by checking that little button there. We'll have, when we uh, get to make some noises, I'll turn it off and we can hear the timbral differences between the two kinds of excitations. Um, yeah. Until then, let's move on. Okay, so default position for all of these, by double clicking, is this. Let's turn on the mixer, and here what do we get? A nice burst of white noise. The chord setting at the moment, and this is unison, so obviously it's just uh, seven um, versions of that note coming out whatever note I choose to pick here. Uh, with the detune function, we have the thick, obviously, to kind of double up the amount of um, filter banks being resonated through. And we have the detune knob here. If we put it down to zero, you can hear at the edges there, There's uh, it's getting a bit wider. Be because we don't have a definitive pitch here, because the resonance is at a, such a medium level, we're not getting any really, we're not really getting any harmonic content. So, let's increase the resonance. I can hear the detuned unison nature of that sound. Let's... So now all the all the 14 filter banks doubled up because we've got the thick on, don't forget. Uh, slightly detuned and you get thick noise, thick whistly noise. Lovely. 
And of course, we can change where that pitch, where that noise exists with this. The important knob not to forget here, let's turn off scale snap while we explore the chord knob. If you've seen the Super Soul video, this will be familiar to you already, so I won't spend too long on it, really, but... Let's just see how these uh, templates of chord structures sound going through this uh, stim well, sound being fed into the filter bank. So we've got, uh, that's just a low and the current unison note. And the minor third, let's go for a kind of like the major third. It's up a little bit of detune and then fatten that up a little bit. Oh, it's wide and almost incomprehensible. Major seventh. Back to the back to the rave, everybody. Back to the rave, please. And again, we have the scale snap button here, which will lock the notes generated by the chord function into the white notes of the scale. So C initially, and if you want it to be in E, for example, obviously that's four semitones above the C, you would up that to that, and you would be, when you've got scale snap on, you could play along to someone else playing in E, and all the notes will fit wonderfully. So if we back down to so just stereo basic, oh no, let's go for unison, that's nice and wide. Okay, put the course back to zero again. And let's just have a nice Oh the night train is here. So if you notice So I'm hitting A with a major seventh chord structure being sent from it. So there should be a C sharp. But there isn't. Well there is at the moment. There's a C sharp and the G sharp as part of a major seventh. As soon as I hit the scale snap, it gets turned into an A minor seven. That may sound like gibberish to you, or it may not, but that's what's happening. So scale snap's really useful for, again, keeping in a key, if that's what you want your music to sound like. Some people do, some people don't. It's up to you. So that's the basic front interface. That's a lovely... Let's just try another noise. And of course the content from the noise device will stimulate the bands in different ways. Oh, there's a, oh, there's a lovely glassiness to that. Right. So, we will now look at the levels page. This is where stuff gets interesting and deep. So we've got three, I'm going to turn off information, we've got three columns here that you can see. This column, actually it might be easier to hear it with just the unison, because then I can... So, this range button here describes how far these levels affect each of the filter banks. So there's seven filter banks and each of these lines describes assets of those filter banks. The, this column describes the pitch. So what I can do, this let's label these columns. This is pitch offset basically. This column describes the it's uh, the resonance, so we can reduce the resonance um, of any of the filter banks to make it 
less resonant and reduce that tone that comes out that we hear. This is an amplitude column, so we can just turn them all off. Nothing comes out. Silence. We put one on. You can see that this column allows us to create any kind of offset possible. The range of this value slider is determined by the range knob here. So, so, put them all back to zero. Let's try something interesting here. That sounds like a root in a fifth of the octave above. How about this one? Let's turn it up. So if we reduce the range, we get a little bit more granularity, obviously, because these sliders. I think we can probably adjust them with the shift as well. Let's turn that one down. It's got an octave and a fifth. Let's turn the third filter up. Get a nice third. So, for example, I might like to keep that as a as a filter bank uh, setting pattern, uh, a level setting pattern. So I can that, that's automatically stored in this pattern in pattern one available from this knob. If we switch to pattern two, we can see that there's just another blank pattern there. Using this knob this button, forgive me, we can copy the current settings to the second pattern selection and make adjustments from here. So we can add Nice sound there, quite, quite enjoying that. Let's turn off the noise keyboard tracking functionality. So the noise that's coming out of the noise machine isn't tracked by pitch. So it's just the same. We can just... I'm hitting MIDI notes. It doesn't matter which MIDI note I hit. The pitch of the noise coming out of it doesn't change. I only change it with the coarse knob. So if we put that back. With the pitch tracking and the noise machine on, we get more high-end material, more high-end content for something for the filter bank to, to resonate a bit deeper. Turn it off and we're just relying on the high frequency content that exists in the noise sample itself. So. Let's just find another one. Now, what about that? There we go. There's a lot of content. Well, that sounds nice. And again, we can copy this pattern to the next pattern. Turn the volume up. Sounds like I've added a nice seventh, flattened seventh. It's a bit out of tune. Certain amount of fine control. It's a little bit out of tune, but it's nice. Isn't that joyous? Okay, let's look back at the main front page again. 
notice we didn't have scale snap on for any of that so less tonal music for those that don't enjoy entirely tonal music and we've got an options page on the front of this as well so we'll have just have a quick look at this the pitch snap we have this on a lot of the oscillator devices this is used to determine how the functionality of the main course tuning knob exists so in the current mode which is well in the default mode which should be off you can see that course tuning um is at a decimal level i think we can even fine tune that by holding the shift button down and it hitting each one of those decimal points of the scale you want to tune to so you can have a weird tuning if you want 9.2 or 8.6 or whatever you can also switch to even which means that as you can see there's no decimals and you can't even access the decimals with a fine tune shift down at the same time as using your mouth op uh, mouse option just for beautiful crude tuning and the third option is for ratio tuning and obviously the that should be showing uh, ratios off uh, relative to uh, use more useful for FM uh, ratio offsets um, I think I might have to uh, just let the developer know that there's a, a GUI bug in that particular mode. It's no biggie though, the functionality will still work. Um, and keeping on this main options screen, smooth is a knob which we can use to smooth the transitions between chord changes. So at the moment, if I switch between chords, it's instantaneous soon as I up that smooth to anything there you go little lullaby so you can change the speed at which the filters uh, switch to the next received pitch fed to it by the chord machine let's see how slow it goes We're listening to three, only three or four of the filters. I've opened them all up again now so we can hear them all. Ooh. What a joy. And of course you can just bend those chords beyond recognition with the D-tune. knob here saturation knob which I believe is a post saturation is post all the filter banks so um, should just only distort the output it's kind of a le good leveler as well saturation will just kind of trim the peaks down a little bit there's also one other option screen here I should let you know about uh, it is in the level screen so here's the level screen as we previously observed and there's a options button up here this options button enables you to attach your say ni keyboard to the blocks layout and to trigger different patterns um, that can be indicated on your keyboard by different colors with uh, this functionality here I'm not going to demo that today that's uh, functionality that exists across all or well, many of the toy box audio reactor blocks. We'll probably do a video to cover that simple functionality at some point in the future. I think that covers the filter bank. Apart from, let's just stick a bit of FM. Yeah. Oh, here we go. 
Uh, mm. Oh, there's some lovely harmonic balancing. If we speed up that pitch bend, the reduce the saturation and touch. And of course, as you can hear, the filter bank is a stereo device, even though the input is mono, because we have the unison and detune function, the filters are spread across the stereo spectrum, so you can hear the lovely stereo-ness and the FM effects each of these filter banks through the stereo spectrum. And I'm just having fun doing this. I think we've hit the end of the video. So thank you for watching. I hope you learnt a few things and enjoyed the sounds we all heard together from the filter bank and the uh, noise module as well. A little surprising, useful little beast, that filter bank. What could we do with that? Apart from feeding everything into it over and over again and back into itself, I can't think uh, what else we could do with that. Beautiful. Thank you very much for enjoying. I assume you did the video. Have fun!